shipwrecked, scrapped, left behind in a port, or stranded on a beach. There are a few ways in which a ship can become abandoned. Some are down to misfortune, some are down to careless owners, and some take a little from column A and a little from column B. Almost every abandoned and forgotten ship has a story to tell, though. So we've put some of the very best of them from all over the world here together for you in this video. Our first story takes us to France, where you'll find what appears to be a ghostly galleon poking out from behind trees on a back road near Toulouse. It's not actually an authentic galleon, but it is an authentic abandoned ship. This was once a floating restaurant that aimed to entertain families and children with a pirate theme, but the business failed just after the turn of the century and closed down. A new restaurant came along to replace it in 2008, but made the questionable decision to host diners next to the ship instead of aboard it. Unsurprisingly, that failed too. Now with nobody to care for the rotting wooden structure, it's become dangerously unstable, with the bridge that connects it to the land rusted almost to pieces. Right now it's serving as a makeshift canvas for the region's graffiti artists, but beyond that, nobody knows whether it has a future at all. In theory, the ship was built to be capable of sailing, but in this state, it's hard to imagine it moving anywhere. Heading across to Canada, you'll find a ship named Friendship 500, floating around in a derelict state on Burrard Inlet, Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Nobody knows it is Friendship 500, though. To those local to the region, it is, and always has been called, the McBarge. The vessel is a floating restaurant that McDonald's built for little reason other than to show off to visitors to the Expo 1986 World Fair in the city. It's thought that it cost the fast food company $8 million to build it, and yet they couldn't find a single use for it after the World Fair ended. It's been abandoned in C2 ever since. It presumably once looked cutting edge and futuristic, but now it looks rusty, lumpy, and downright ugly. In 2016, there were rumors that the unwanted barge would be renovated and used as part of a new waterfront development in the area. But four years have passed since then, and there is no sign of any repair or maintenance work happening at the site. It might be called the Friendship, but nobody has shown this poor vessel any friendly behavior in a very long time. In late 2019, an old ferry that had attained legendary status in the northeast of England was towed away on its final ever journey. Its name was the Tuxedo Royale, and while it might have become something of an eyesore in its final few years, it was once the place to be seen in Newcastle. Back then, it was a floating nightclub, which occasionally called at other stops up and down the River Tyne. In 2009, it arrived at Abel Middlesbrough Port, but got stuck there after its owners went bankrupt. The nightclub closed immediately, and the ship, formerly known as the British Rail Cross Channel Ferry TSS Dover, stood silent for a decade. During that time, it attracted vandals, squatters, and graffiti artists, all of whom left their own mark on the ailing and aging vessel. A local community group attempted to raise funds to have it restored and sent to a maritime museum, but a large fire aboard the ship in June 2018 ended any chance of that. The local government decided to cut their losses and scrap the Tuxedo Royale, and that voyage it took in late 2019 was to the Wreckers Yard. If you're interested in old or abandoned ships, you've probably seen images of the Soviet cruiser Murmansk before. It's one of the world's most famous abandoned vessels, and is known in Russia as the ship that never gave up. The Murmansk is, or more accurately was, a Svedlov-class light cruiser that served in the Soviet fleet for more than 40 years. After launching in April 1955, she continued to sail as a military vessel until she was eventually decommissioned in 1989. How, then, did she come to be trapped off the coast of Norway four years later? The answer is that she was on her way to be scrapped when she met with an accident. The vessel was sent to India to be scrapped, but it seems the Murmansk had other ideas about its fate. She ran aground close to the Norwegian town of Sorver and couldn't be moved. At the time, it was thought that winter storms in the area would destroy the stricken ship, but they didn't. The Murmansk shook the weather off as if it were nothing. And so in 2009, with the vessel still in C2, a decision was taken to dismantle it by hand. 
Even that wasn't easy. The job wasn't completed until 2015. Only the bravest among you would ever dare to visit the abandoned boat hotel known as the Galaxy in Koh Chang, Thailand. Local legends say that it's haunted, and most of them won't go anywhere near it. For such a huge vessel, it's perhaps surprising that very little is known about it other than its name. We're not even sure how it came to be stuck in Koh Chang. It does appear to have been abandoned very quickly, though. Some of the cabins on board the ship still have personal items in them. These days, the only living things that sleep inside the ship are the stray cats and dogs who call it home. Note that we said living things, though. The local community is very serious about the ghost stories. They even say that some of the people who've gone to investigate or explore the ship were never seen again. We're not sure about that. There's a single security guard watching the vessel and charging $20 for people to step aboard and take pictures. And nothing ghostly ever seems to happen to him. There are three schools of thought about the current status of the TSS Duke of Lancaster, a steamer that's currently stuck on the Welsh River Dee. Some people say it's doomed to be demolished. Others say that it's about to be saved by new buyers. A third group says that it's been saved already. It's easy to see why people get confused about it. The vessel used to be a domestic ferry, but was retired from service after 22 years of operation in 1978 and brought to Wales to be repurposed as a fun ship, with amusement arcades and entertainment facilities aboard. The local council denied permission for the ship to be used in this way, and so the Duke of Edinburgh got stuck, and then eventually forgotten about. In 2012, she was supposed to be in the middle of reopening as an art gallery and got a new external paint scheme from some of Europe's best graffiti artists. But five years later, both sides of the ship were repainted black. The art gallery project has presumably fallen through, and nobody appears to know what might happen next or who ordered it to be repainted. The Mary D. Hume may look like she's been forgotten and left to rot in Florence, Oregon, USA, but that's not technically true. She was actually brought here on purpose, to rot away in peace. Her story began in 1889 when she was bought as an Arctic whaling vessel and put her to use in the Bering Sea. She spent 20 years in that questionable trade before being sold to the American Tugboat Company in 1909, who refitted her and put her to work as an ocean tugboat. Five years after that, in 1914, she had another career change when she was refitted with halibut dories and spent a few years chasing halibut around Alaska. Her halibut years didn't last for very long, though, and she was soon back on tugboat duty, which lasted another 60 years. Finally, in the summer of 1978, it was time for this long-tenured old boat to retire. She sailed home under her own power to the port of Gold Beach, just a few feet from where she was launched on her maiden voyage. She looks a little green and rickety now, but given that she's approaching 150 years old, that's probably to be expected. If circumstances were different, the Mamie S. Barrett would be celebrating its 100th year afloat next year, and there would probably be parties on board to mark the occasion. The towboat was built in Jeffersonville, Indiana in 1921, and immediately became the flagship of the region's Barrett Towboat and Barge Line Company. She had grander things in her future than simple barge work, though. In 1949, she was sold to a new owner in West Alton, Missouri, where she received a full refit as she was reimagined as a private clubhouse. That's how she stayed for 30 years, during which time she's believed to have welcomed several celebrity guests. But in 1981, it was time for another change. The now 60-year-old ship sailed to Kentucky and began a new life as a restaurant. One visitor enjoyed the restaurant so much that they bought it in 1987 and brought it to Vicksburg, Mississippi, where the Mamie S. Barrett became both a restaurant and a theater. It might even still be open now, were it not for the Great Flood of 1993. The catastrophic weather event ripped the ship away from Vicksburg and set it down in Louisiana's Concordia Parish, damaged and trapped. Nothing could be done to save her, and so she's still there now. The Spanish island of Lanzarote attracts millions of tourists from all over the world each year, and many of them are stopped in their tracks by the surprising sight of a huge shipwreck 
standing on the shore close to Costa Teguz. It doesn't appear in many tourist guides to the island, but this is the shell of the Telamon, an old Scottish ship built in Dundee in 1954. Back then, she was known as the Temple Hall. She was renamed Pantelis when she was sold to a Greek owner in 1969, and renamed again when she was sold on to another Greek in 1977. Four years later, she was carrying logs from the Ivory Coast back to the port of Thessaloniki when she sprung a leak and began taking on water. The emergency forced the ship to run aground on 31st of October 1981, and she's never moved again. A later inspection found that she'd been poorly maintained for years, and this was the primary cause of the accident she'd met with. Any chance of her being refloated or salvaged was ended in 1985 when a heavy storm split the wreck in half, sending half of it beneath the waves. Right at the start of this video, we ran through a list of reasons as to why a ship might become abandoned. But we didn't mention insurance fraud. That's what's believed to have led to the wreckage and abandonment of the MVE Evangelia on the Black Sea coast of Costinesti in Romania. The 7,000-ton cargo ship was built under the name Empire Strength in Northern Ireland in 1942, with the intention that she would become part of the British war fleet. Aside from shipping refrigerated supplies from one place to the next, she didn't do much during the war. And when it was over, she was sold on into private hands. For much of the next 20 years, she passed from one owner to the next, changing names multiple times in the process, until she became the property of the Greek company who named her MVE Evangelia in 1965. She was on her way from Yugoslavia toward Romania when she ran aground to the south of Constanta three years later and got stuck. No cause for the accident could ever be determined, and so attempted insurance fraud has always been widely suspected. The old Soviet cruise liner Lubov Orlova is unique in our video, as she's the only abandoned ship that we don't know the location of. In fact, we can't even be 100% sure that she's still floating at all. The vessel, named in honor of an old-time Soviet movie star, was once the pride of the fleet of the Marine Expeditions Company. She received her first passengers in 1976 and was still welcoming visitors 30 years later. By 2010, she was still running, but in a poor state of repair. By 2012, she was badly damaged, and the company that owned her was in deeper debt than it could afford to pay. The company went bust, and the ship was sold for scrap. As she was being towed from Canada's Newfoundland to a wreckers yard in the Dominican Republic in January 2013, though, she snapped her tow rope and drifted off on her own, seemingly intent on seeing the world one last time. She was sighted further down the Canadian coast a few weeks after that, and then identified by the Irish Coast Guard on the other side of the North Atlantic Ocean three months after that. Since then, there's been no sign of her. There's a cove on the island of Zakynthos called Shipwreck Bay, and it owes its name to the wreck of the MV Panagiotis. That's a fact, but almost every other aspect of the life of the Panagiotis is a guess. The coaster ship is thought to have been built in Scotland during the late 1930s, serving as a trading vessel for almost 30 years under the name MV St. Bedan, before being sold on in 1964, and then sold on again in 1975, which is when she became the Panagiotis, under the ownership of a man named Mr. P. Lysikatos. After that, there are no records of her until October 1980, when she's found abandoned in her current location. Lots of people on the island have a theory as to how and why she got there, but the most commonly believed story is that she was being used to transport black market cigarettes back and forth between Turkey and Greece, and was forced into the cove while being pursued by the Greek Navy. The crew fled on foot when the ship ran aground, and the Navy never caught the smugglers. The Navy has denied that version of events, so feel free to make up your own tale. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!